here it is. A little bit of waiting time, but we have it. The grand final of One Belt, One Road is among us. $4,400 for the winner, $3,000 for the loser. It's Moon versus WFZ in a best of five. This is the game through the... Uh, this is the way through the bracket for the two guys. WFZ with the easier grit, the upper part of the bracket, defeating Joshi Shi. 2-0 in the quarterfinals, followed it up with a 2-1 over Shao KK. Which was pretty close, actually, thanks to a strong Torrent Chief Dame, but WFZ overall better. And playing very, very, very smart in both games. I'm really surprised with WFZ's shape here. Um, certainly the strongest WFZ that we've seen all year, by far. Moon hasn't lost a single map in this tournament against TBC. This looked like child's play. That wasn't a challenge for him at all. Even Lin couldn't threaten him. It was the semi-final that we've all been waiting for, but then it was over in less than 30 minutes. That's why they stand in the grand final. Our two players here. It's South Korea versus China. Of course, Moon the living legend, the guy who has earned the most prize money with Warcraft 3 on his way to the $500,000 benchmark. The only player who's even remotely close to this number. WFZ, his first grand final since early 2016, almost three years ago when he was in the Super GCS final against Fly, which he lost. He has lost, he has won Faith Cup in 2016, but that's about it since then. He's certainly on the decline, like Dropping out in tournaments early, rarely surviving group stages. That's WFZ in 2018, but he could make up for all of this if he wins three maps against Moon. Sounds easier than it is. Here we go. Map number one between Moon and WFZ in the grand final of BREC. Keeper of the Grove for Moon, of course. The Acolyte is harassing a little, was pulling the creeps towards the engine of war. Moon, of course, with a lightning shield creep, will speed this up. There's no threat here, but the Acolyte was already a little annoying, and I think that's key for WFZ to not get let Moon get into his comfort zone. That is not acceptable at all. So the... Wait, what? Moon is purple. That's done. <laughs> WFZ with a Tet Fiend build order and ghoul creeping. Interesting approach. This fastens up basically everything. He's getting close to level 2 as well. And one wisp kill is the unholy aura for him. Claws of attack, nice item too. And this apprentice wizard is going to be the kill. Switches the aggro by attacking this little skeleton himself. And there we go. Unholy aura ready. Of course, no mana burn. And he's interrupting this creep by Moon, but catches an entangle right away. So good damage already on the first hero of WFZ. There's more mana. So he can't really stay in this harass. This didn't accomplish anything. Moon with more archers. We've seen a crazy shredder push yesterday with a lot of archers and this is certainly possible on Amazonia as well. Yesterday it was against Orc, against Lin, who didn't see it coming at all. Ah, there's the tree. All right. Tree and summoned. And we have the first donation of the day. Thank you Serbian Jarks for the 10 euros for services rendered to Warcraft 3 over many years. Thank you. Thank you very much for getting up early and watching this with me and supporting me doing so. WFZ, as I said, with a Ted Fiend build order. That means he's on his DK alone for quite some time. Can't really do too much, but having level 2 with this build order is already quite nice. I mean, not Amazonia, um, it's fairly normal. But he can't lose any units at the moment because he doesn't have any units on the field. And he's camping around the tavern, but it's way too early for that. Moon only now starting the tech that is good for WFZ for sure but the expansion is at two thirds I guess and there's no big ghoul army to deal with this coil comes in denies even more experience um, and this is a very low keeper okay, like level 2.25 only and another steal by WFZ who has a good early game really uh, but yeah the Problem is, not too many ghouls, only four. He's pulling all of them now. Only one remaining. This acolyte, little trapped here, poor fella. Sending the ghouls back is not attacking this expo. That's the downside of this build. 
not having too much damage early. But he stole basically the entire creep spot here. Keeper is trying to creep Jack. Needs some levels, man. He's fa still far away from level 3. That's not supposed to be that way. Oh, especially not on Amazonia, where level 3 is so easy. Skeleton Player scouts this now. Attack. And he scouts the creep spot. Good scouting by WFZ. We have seen ghoul rushes on this map by Lucifer, for example. WFZ is going another route. A little more passive. And it pays off fairly well thus far. But I don't think he can do anything against this creep here. If he can steal a Taskmaster, it would be insane. But he's busy with his own Murlocs to get level 2 coil. And that's level 3. So, Moon has the better hero now. Moon is catching up in tech, but WFC taking to tier 3 immediately. Slaughterhouse, Lich, tier 3. That's the standard. Not a single fiend yet. Ghoul rush against the keeper with Archer's of Suicide. Not really. We have seen it work many times this week. So the Expo is tanking and WFC is coming in. That's a great timing. The ghouls are a little late with this and it's five archers. Expo still down. Shadow Melt being used. A lot of skeletons here as well. Can he get rid of the Treants? The big one is that it's a big potion of healing. Moon is a little bit in trouble here, but the ghouls are wasting, in quotes, their damage on the Treants. And it's not level 3 yet here. Also, surrounding the Keeper, not really a possibility thanks to the potion. Now the ghouls are finding the targets that he wants, finding the archers. Oh, oh, the Keeper is coming in. And that's so good! The DK is kind of trapped. Coil Nova with the Lich arriving. But this has to be a Town Portal. He's catching way too much damage! And what did WFZ accomplish here? Not too much, really. I think Moon saved all the archers. I'm pretty sure I counted five before, and now it's... Oh, six before, now it's six. The winds are coming, the expo is still up, full HP, and the town portal is lost, and he didn't get level three, and he's super hurt. That was a great reaction by Moon. Shadow melting the archers so they are not a target for the ghouls. The Treants dealt with the ghouls, then the alchemist came in, and with acid bomb, you can deal with this undead army so easy. And not attacking with the dust when it's nighttime was certainly a mistake. But his big Please timing push is still to come. Attack. With Frenzy Ghouls, with Destroyers. But he needs some Fiends soon. I don't think he's going for that at all. It's all okay, there's the first one. He needs Web as well because Hippos are coming. And they will load up these Archers. And then the Ghouls don't do anything. Destroyer upgrade, cute. Expansion did not pay off yet. I like that Moon is preparing this with a Moon well. But the clock is on WFZ for sure. Eight minutes in. Normal timings by Moon actually. Scouts even more with the illusion. And he sees, okay, this uh, Hippogriff army, I need to get more fiends, I need to get web. Web is a very fast upgrade, so you don't have to prepare it, really. You can just go for it when you see the first air units. And now we have level 3 on the DK. Now we have a strong Lich with plus 14. And Dark Ritual is ready as well. The damage in this army is pretty poor. It's just mass. That's all he has. Is it Tinker third? Yes, it is. Pocket factory deployed. Moon has to go for a town portal. Will he go for the town portal before the creep or will he waste that time? WFC is going for the moon well first. That's not enough. Repair is coming in, not committing to it. Oh, interesting TP. Losing the first hippo immediately, but how much web is there really? Acid bomb, but here comes the call to save this one. First kill goes to WFC, but man, just sniping this fiend. Entangle again, can he coil against it? No, the anti-air is gone. Only the hippos rain in the air now, nothing else. Where are the fiends, man? The fairy dragons are coming in. The lich is the only anti-air, really. The destroyer dispels a little more. The clockworks are attacking this expansion in the meantime. Maybe we can switch the focus with the ghouls as well. WFZ's fight is not that bad, despite only having, like, ghouls and destroyers. 
can he knock this down? Pocket Factory is down. There is one more, though. Mass Repair. He has a Nova against this. But the ghouls are dying. There's no TP. This is, a do uh, this is an all-in for WFZ, but I don't think he can deal with it, or can he? Oh, more and more repair, but he kills the Wisps in the back. Ghouls are falling in the front line. Level up for the Alchemist, level 3 now. So it's only the heroes. Oh, man. This is so risky. Pocket Factory again. This must be it. WFZ, I think he can chew through this. There's no more coil, though. And the Lich is in trouble. The Lich is, has an invo potion. But where is the damage? He needs more Clockworks. And then evacuate as soon as possible. DK is about to fall. Moon only going for hero focus. This expo is dead. But it's a double kill for the Korean. Trading t one expo for two heroes. And he's still on the prowl for this Tinker. And you know what? There's an exp uh, there's a tangle coming. Here we go. GG. It wasn't enough. It wasn't all in. It was successful, but he lost way too much in the process. 1-0 for Moon, who is still undefeated in this tournament. He couldn't afford a TP there. He lost too much already. So even if he gets out with his heroes, I think Moon is pretty strong at that point. Um... With his double level 3, with all the air. So, I don't know if WFZ's build was that great. Only against buildings. And too little against anti-air. He took a risk and... Maybe... <sighs> if he doesn't lose all... The ghouls and the statue and the destroyer. Maybe it's worth it. But even then, the tinker falls off quite hard in the late game. So maybe not. And Moon, I mean... The, his early wasn't the best. WFZ played nicely around him. Um, but this was the best Night Elf map by far. Amazonia is Keeper Town. And we saw some... Very, very promising plays by WFC here. Especially the DK harassed. Was very good. Um, was a little late with his tier 3. Uh, with his uh, level 3. But yeah, There's the winner of map number 1. Only two more for the championship. Moon, of course. As I'm waiting for the next game, which is not up. It's WFZ's map choice, of course. And it is Concealed Hills. Wufajen, there we see him uh, choosing the maps. The stream is a little delayed, but yeah. He doesn't have to think for a long time about this. Concealed Hills, maybe it's Gargoyle time. We've seen quite a few Gargs. This tournament, also in King of Maps. So... Night Elves have to think about it now. The old school Garg play is kind of back. Thanks to Lucifer, mostly. The, and WFZ was picking up against it, uh, uh, picking up on it against Chishi, I think. Where well, I was very surprised to see a Chinese undead go Gargs. But he played it really well. Okay, chat seems to be uh, disagreeing with me on the performance of WFZ. I think his coils were on time. I think his timings were rather good. Certainly uh, better than expected on Amazonia. I mean, we have to calculate this in that this uh, was one of the best Night of maps. So what to do? What 
tactic to choose, what opening to choose on Concealed Hills. Here are your players again. I have to change the colors a little as Moon is going for orange this time. Map number two. After this, it could be match points for the living legend already. But WFZ certainly has something to say against that. Moon in the bottom left of Concealed Hills playing the Night Elf Rays, of course, with a normal engine of war creep against the ogres. WFZ is the one who decides the pace of the game. How fast will he attack? Ghoul rush or no ghoul rush? Ghouls early or not? Fiend build or not, guard play or not. The Night Elf is kind of dominating this matchup, but the, the decisions are made by the undead. Oh, sorry, score, yes. Moon with the 1-0, sorry. So it's again a Keeper of the Grove. We've seen Shishi play Demon Hunter, which was a nice change for once. <laughs> but I think everyone saw that the Demon Hunter is not really a solution to this. There is still a lot of discussion, and Shishi said it in an interview as well that we've up on our Facebook, uh, done by WFZ's wife, by the way. You. Love you. Um, forces are under attack. That the undeads, they don't have the build against Night Elf yet. They are experimenting a lot, going heavy on ghouls or not, going a few ghouls, going fiend opening, uh, late fiend opening, going gargs. There is not this cookie cutter strategy that's set in stone. Of course, Night Elves have a lot of diversity in their builds as well. Going air, going mass archers um, into hippos, going huntress into hippos. There's a lot of builds for night elves. But all right. Creeping starts. We have a ghoul opening for WFC. And the keeper is rushing over immediately. Close to level two. Oh, the ghoul is in trouble. He has to use two coils already. And Moon is just aiming for the acolytes, delaying the tech here. I love this play. Here come Treants, but the tower... Oh, this will take some time. WFC cannot afford to lose a single acolyte right here. He didn't give up the creeps, but the ghouls are all hurt. And the keeper... Well, he doesn't have Entangle. That's good. But some right clicks might do the job here. Acolytes are dancing. This is still the version where the Acolytes are super duper fast, so that's not that easy. Oh, there is level 2. There's Entangle, but the DK has a coil to medicate this ghoul for a little bit, and the second tree will be dealt with as well. So, WFZ is not losing an Acolyte here, but his tech is so late. Finally, level 2 as well. Moon is teching already. Moon has the Expo coming up. And usually it's the Undead with the fast attack. So it's more ghouls. This is a painful early three and a half minutes for the undead already. Who needs to win this map? Graveyard coming. Right along the deck. Oh, these archers, man. So good. Entangle. Here comes the damage. And once again, there's no dust. That was the big mistake of WFZ in game one. Not go for this dust. He has one more coil trying to save this ghoul. Whoa, last second coil. But does it really save the units? Entangle is so oppressive. That was the last one, though. And he gets some decent right clicks on this keeper. So losing one ghoul, maybe two. Can he get in range? Not with Entangle, that's for sure. Ghouls are healing up at the fountain for a little bit. And these skeletons, they have to do exactly this job now. Right clicking the keeper. But, of course, what goes for the ghouls goes for the keeper as well. And that's why Moon could commit so much um, to dive into WFZ's side of the map. Because he knows he can easily heal up. But WFZ is waking up the creeps. That's the risk here. The dragon is uh, pretty damn strong. And uh, Arch is about to fall. WFZ wanted to block a little. Three coils, of course, he doesn't have that, but he's walking right into the arms of the Tree of Life, so he knows about that. 
Frost one hungers. This archer could be killed in a bit, but he's getting close to the moon. It's nice disable by moon with the entangle to prevent this kill. The UFC is not forgetting about the ziggurats. Tech is 80% through. No Huntress. Ah, there is a Huntress Hall by Moon. Interesting. We didn't see a Huntress Hall last time. So Keeper is back to full health, of course. That cost a lot of Moon Juice. All of the Moon Juice, actually. He still has to creep this. There is one coil. And the ghouls are coming again. No backpack, no dust. It's not turning daytime anytime soon. But all of this delays the expansion. But again, the alchemist is here. Moon's timings with his tech are so good. Still tier three tech by WFZ with Lich, Slaughterhouse, and of course tier three. Moon trying to wrap around. But how is WFZ supposed to fight this? Easy first kill, but investing a little bit of mana onto this. Creeps are attacking this expo now. WFC is going for the Wisp already that burned all of his mana. No coil anymore and the second ghoul is going down. Moon's expo at 50% though, without starting this creep. Engines of lore in the main. I don't think he can go for this. Keeper is still not level 3. Who is WFZ? I've never seen this guy before. Well, WFZ was the best undead in the world in 2014. And he was the one, like, he was the successor of TED. Also, an apprentice of TED. They practiced a lot together back in the day. And kind of the teacher of 120 when he started his rise in late 2014, early 2015. But then, at one point, he couldn't uh, catch up with that anymore. Got a wife, got a child. A German wife, actually. That's why the Chinese call him the German. Oh, wind of mana stealing. Okay, uh-oh. Entangle acid bomb on the lich. Can't be loaded into the Zeppelin at the moment. There we go. Statues being saved as well. Good evacuation. But, ooh, that was quite close. Yeah, prior to 120, WFZ really was the only undead hope that we had in the scene. Nice guy, very calm, very collected. A two and two partner of Yumiko. So we're going fiends now, getting web as well. This time we have three fiends instead of one. But Moon's levels are once again... Oh my god, he gets the Legion Doomhorn. That is... Like, so much movement speed, especially in combination with the Dryad Slow and Entangle. And a Tome of Experience. Ouch. Ouch! Lucky Moon with this spot, man. This was the best outcome. Unholy Aura and Tome of Experience. He's one and a half levels ahead. And the expansion is, of course, up and running. Wand of Illusion. No double crypt. Lich gets the orb. Needs to wait some time, though. Forces are under attack. It's only Dryads, though. But Dryads in the hand of Moon are just a super strong weapon. How well he controls them is pretty insane, but... He does have the Orb of Corruption now. Three Fiends. It's good piercing damage. No upgrades, but that should be fine. There's still a bunch of archers in as well. So Nova does have a target too. But he needs to destroy against so many Treants. I mean, a few of them are expiring. But I like how Moon has constantly like three or five Treants with him. 
That does cost some mana. He gets the Tinker again to kill the Tree of Life. Acid Bomb into the Fiend. Statues need to heal against this, but it's okay. I guess it's uh, worse against... Oh, this Dryad, he gets it for free. First little mistake by Moon in this series. Yeah, these screens. Sick. Heal scroll as well. Double heal scroll by Moon. I don't think there's anything on the side of WFZ. There's an invo potion and that's about it. Oh, this Lich is in trouble. Needs a coil soon. The destroyer, of course, will have mana the entire time, but he's walking into the Dryad Concave. Ghouls are about to fall. This oh, a heal scroll now would be the dream for all the ghouls who can't really connect to the backline. He's still dealing with the Treants. Illusions don't do anything, can be dispelled. Oh, they soak up damage now. It's not looking that good for WFZ, actually. 44 supply against 60. You can't win this fight. Fiends are falling now. Doesn't have uh, coils anymore. Lich is low. Second Fiend is falling. This looks very good for Moon again. WFZ just can't break this. Three Fiends in a row dead. And there's still 64 supply Dryads. And again, the WFZ down to only his heroes. Tinker can't be coiled at all. Invo Potion on the Alchemist. Invo Potion swap to the Tinker, but yeah. It's evacuation time. Has to get out. Or is there a nuke on him? Level 4? Oh, no, I don't think so. Can he ultra surround him? Acid Bomb on the Lich? There is a, the one last coil that was remaining, but it's time to die for the Tinker. Now summons the Pocket Factory one last time. Level 4 on the Keeper of the Grove, who has another Entangle against no coil. He's trying to do his best with damage against the Dryads, but he can't get rid of it. Entangle on the Lich as well. Town Portal swap, but whoo, actually doesn't need it. Saves his army here, but it's 70 supply. It's just too much. Alchemist has a heal potion. DK has nothing except the TP. Still fighting, though. But this fiend survives. Not too bad. But not a single point of damage was dealt to the Tree of Life. And an undead army was slaughtered. All ghouls gone. At least two fiends dead. Forces are under attack. The destroyer survived. WFZ is still at 50. But there's free healing for Moon now. There's another big red spot for Moon now. Another heal scroll. The third heal scroll. Of course he can't afford it with his expo running. Tier 3 on the way as well. Attack upgrades for the Dryads. And the Moon will 480 supply. WFZ needs strong heroes and especially a strong Lich. This guy has to bring the damage. Gets a Talisman of Evasion. Meh, Tinker level 2. Moon got so much experience off of this map already with just better creeping. Players' forces are under attack. And he gets the third one as well. Uh, not having the scroll of healing was a big mistake, I think, for WFZ. Moon had two, WFZ had zero. And if he has a heal scroll, once the ghouls are not dead but super hurt, maybe he gets this, but Moon, like, all three red spots. This is not allowed to happen ever. I think this is an all-in against the tree as well. No nature's blessing yet. Oh boy, in the middle of everything! Devotion aura here. The fiends are just melting. There's... Oh, he misses the coil. The destroyer. Ah, oh, two destroyers actually. Can dispel nicely against the treants, but how much mana is left on the DK? It's only one. Oh, yes, the mana potion, which is nice. But the damage on the Lich is surreal. Has to get out of there. This fiend is dying again. A missed coil. That didn't happen too much on map one. Now we saw it twice in a row. First abomination. Second abomination. A player's forces are he is transitioning, but... Ouch, man. 
Alchemist is very tanky with his belt. Is he just pushing again? Looks like it. Invo potion. Only one, right? If I see this correctly. Lich is not even level three. And Moon is 5-5 five, five soon. Trying his best with more normal damage. At least a little bit. And he's forcing Town Portal top of Moon, which is also not that bad. Second one in uh, like one and a half minutes. He wants to fight this. Uh-oh, Tinker down to half HP already. He needs to dispel on this Entangle. Coils instead. Oh, this was not necessary, really. DK low, Tinker low, Fiend low. Abomination low. This is like 20 supply about to die for WFC. What an acid bomb! Everything grouped up and everything suffering so hard. Level 3 saves him for a little bit, but man, Moon has so many targets to choose from. Look at this concave. Everything is filled with dryads and they are just overwhelming. Moon holds the expansions and that's GG. 2-0 and match points, championship points for the fifth race. As I said, not losing a best of five since September. And this is looking very good for the world champion once again. And again, the army composition of WFZ very much targeted to kill the expansion. And that's about it. Like, he's not playing against his opponent's units. He's playing against his opponent's buildings, basically. On the other side, can you go against the Knight of Expansion long term? Not really, I think. So, but then the timing has to hit earlier. I think we saw that this doesn't work. The way he plays it. Well, when was the last time Moon lost the game to Undead? Let's look this up on... Walker3.info the last competitive game he lost against an undead was in August. Against 120. That was a patch 1.29, by the way. So undefeated against undead on this patch. Well, to be fair, on this patch, only Law Lyot and Focus beat him. He's, by the way, on a 12 0 Win streak, not in maps, in seriouses. Moon with this patch is just unstoppable. He looks like the 2007 Moon. Echo Isles, is this the ghoul rush? Is this the Garg play? Is this something else? WFZ needs to throw a curveball, but Moon, so far his builds and his building positioning um, was not too greedy, was always prepared for something. Like, the position of the Engine of War is always close to his base, so if there's a Ghoul Rush coming, he has his Engine of War ready. So here he is, one map away from $4,400 and the third tournament win in a row after Shenkui Cup and WGL, the World Championships. Again changing up the color. WFC going for purple now. The Undead needs a solution. 
The undead needs some kind of new trick against this. This grand final could be over. Right after this game. Moon in the upper left, and again, the Engine of War positioned next to the green camp, or, yeah, next to the little green camp. Not greedily going for the mercenary camp, not exposing his base at all. Is Moon going for something else this time? Well, he played uh, two different strategies, but always an expansion. This side looks like a ghoul build thus far. And should be a DK. Everything else but a DK would be a big surprise, and it is the Dreadlord! There it is! A desperation attempt, maybe. Sleep surrounds. Shall be the key to make this a series and to catch up to Moon's 2-0. So this must be a ghoul rush. This must be a Dreadlord ghoul rush with sleep and vamp aura. Vamp aura so strong. 20% lifesteal on level 1. Of course you can cancel sleep. But only if you attack your units. And there's always a little moment... ...where the unit is disabled. So... Starting off with Treants. So he can't go for the counter disable with Entangle. Eight hundred people watching. Nice. Dreadlord starts with creeping. I don't think Moon saw this yet. Two ghouls. Not a second crypt, by the way, and a Nerubian tower. So he is ready for the keeper to come. He sets a little trap, not exposing his Dreadlord. Ah, oh, he's going back now, and he will see it. There's not enough ghouls for a surround. So, okay, Keeper knows. There's the sleep, though. And then this must be the surround. Yep, nice reaction. Insta TP to not use the town portal. And this is already better than game number two, where he was. It, it was taking just so much time. Ooh, okay. To defend the Treants. This time, no Treants. And now the Keeper saw the base, saw only one crypt. And right as the Keeper leaves. He builds the second one. Dreadlord level one in a bit. We have the sacrificial skull for a little bit more region. There's no acolyte, is there? There is! He's towering him! Moon did not go into an expansion yet. Oh, tier two is one third done. What's he doing? Dread Lord Tower Rush in a grand final. He gets rid of this moon. Well, I guess he holds on to the sleep, but the wisps are coming in for detonate. Wants to surround once more, but there's so many treants. I don't know if that's the right idea. Wakes up the keeper immediately. Here comes the towers. Sacrificial skull used immediately. Two ziggurats deployed, but he does have the treants against it. Not using it at the moment. Ghouls everywhere. WFC, of course, has to use a lot of resources at the moment. The ziggurats are falling, but they're also distracting. Keeper down to 50%. This time he has the dust. This time he gets the archers and rebuilds the ziggurats. How long duration is there on the tree? And this one is expiring, but the others are quite strong. Moon losing more HP, but WFC also losing quite a few ghouls. D uh, Dreadlord needs this aura, I think, to get a little bit of lifesteal. Everything is hurt. He needs to stay on the blight as well for additional regen. As he doesn't have a coil, doesn't have uh, the unholy aura. Everything is dropping low. These archers, man, they're killing the ghouls one by one. Engine of Wonders is coming and more archers. Maybe you should have focused on the production building, man. These summons are wrecking the towers. The Dreadlord is about to fall. No reinforcements. Here comes the Entangle. No TP. This is the kill, is it? Not really. 12 HP, but with the hero gone. Oh, he's moving in again. Level 3. Two level difference. The tower is up. Needs repair. It's not enough. This dreadlord falls. Feeds the 
Keeper to level 3.6. And Moon is just not losing archers here. The Moon Wells are empty, but he's just not losing archers. A few Wisps, yep. But that's about it. This all-in strategy didn't work as well. He's down to 21 supply. Masterful defense by Moon. Who is at tier 2, can get the Alchemist. And the Alchemist is the key against ghouls. Treants everywhere. Archer saves everywhere. And just no kills for WFZ. Can he do this one more time? He didn't tech. So, oh, nice detonate. So no mana on this Dreadlord. Moon knows. If I stay on my side, he has to come again. If I buy more time, I'm gonna have a lot of air units with hippo riders and he can't do anything against the wfz has not a single unit that can attack air at the moment so he's taking out okay going for the berserker taking out the mercenary camp boots of speed not bad finally the aura of course wfz stays in this game of course he tries everything he can but double engine of wind is coming. There's still a Players lot of blight here, attack. actually. Maybe that helps. But Moon is going for level... Oh, he is level 4 already. <laughs> 30 supply and the ziggurat is late. For more reinforcements. Moon is just running away with everything. 10 supply more. Two levels more. Soon to be three levels more. A player's forces are under attack. He's close to a level three dreadlord though. With enough ghouls, like can he snipe the tree or something? Sleep level 2. Or a hero kill. Something. Some desperation moves. Keeper has no TP. And no potion. And no second hero to staff him out. A sleeps around is definitely possible. But I like Moon's the movement here. Always having summons back. or archers next to the keeper. Sleeping the hippo. Okay. I mean, sleep is a little cheaper. Cancels the expansion here. Is he going for attack? No. Just more ghouls. And... Mercenaries. So four anti-air units. Oh, but the hippos just picked them up. Is this enough damage now? Against four hippos? It looks okay with the two berserkers now. 40 supply against 45. Plus blight. But he's fighting against Moonwells, he's fighting against the shop, he's fighting against instant reinforcements. And again, WFC needs another now Ziggurat, not building it here, he's stuck at 40 supply. But the ghouls have great damage against buildings, etc. Is he going for the keeper? He's trying to, but right next to a Moonwell, this will take forever. First hippo is down. The surround cannot be closed. Dispel is coming in. Sleep again. Level 5. Keeper of the Grove. As I said, no TP. Moon, can he somehow do something? Nope. The Keeper on level 5 falls. Level 4 on the Dreadlord. He has to be very, very careful. The Entangle, though. And so many Treants. I think he just should just leave. Save as many ghouls as you can and try to use your time creeping. But he's losing the Dreadlord. Oh, with Boots actually able... To outmaneuver him. Cutting some corners is Moon. The Wisp is coming in for the block. Detonate only. Uh oh. Look at this. The Keeper is coming from the tavern. And this has to be it. He burned the mana with the Wisp so there was no sleep against the Keeper. What a great play by Moon. In the meantime, Ghouls in the base. Yeah, but whatever. The Keeper is back. And the Dreadlord level 4 has fallen. And it's still tier 1. And sooner or later the anti-air will be gone. Moon is coming in with a block as well. The flashy plays now. Oh, doesn't get the Dreadlord back now. 
but no mana. Can't go for sleep. Yes, he does have the aura now, but that's all he can provide. No chance to go for an orb, no chance to go for web, no chance to go for gargs. Only berserkers. But there's five. Wufa Zhen is struggling. Is about to be swiped off this map. Is he trying to counter expand now? He's not even crept in the south. Next job, the first one got cancelled. The undead has 500 gold. The hero kill bought him more time. But what's this time worth? If you're constantly up against Treants... And doesn't have to spell. He's losing the mercs instantly. Oh, slow. Level 6 on the Keeper, by the way. We have Tranquility. Sleep? Okay. But... Where's the damage coming from? This is a ridiculous 21 supply army. Everything falls. Even if he wants to kill him. Nope. Doesn't work. There would be Tranquility. And Moon is the champion. Not losing a single map in the entire tournament. The champion of the Belt and Road Esports competition. And $4,400 richer is Moon winning his third tournament in a row, Shankwe Cup, WGL, and BREC. WFZ was no match. WFZ had nothing really prepared that uh, Moon didn't expect. And that's how he wins the last offline tournament of the year. Pretty good year for Moon, I'd say, in the end. He was starting off rather weak, but now surpassing Infi and TH. Third best earning player in 2018, uh, 2018 right after 120 and Lin. So yeah, the Moon is back. Full Moon. In the Warcraft scene. But it's also a pretty cool accomplishment for WFZ, who was so disappointed, demotivated. He wanted to quit like several times this year, but almost $3,000 for him. That's a nice boost for 2019 when it's about like 2019 will be the most exciting year for Warcraft in forever. So many competitions, reforged, a new WGL, and hopefully more and more tournaments to come. That was a very nice tournament with a few tier 2 players, but they have all shown uh, that they can hang. Um, that they can provide great entertainment. The final was very one-sided, unfortunately, but WFZ played great against Zoshi Shi, provided us with great games against Shao KK, and Moon was just plowing through this bracket. Made it look like Child's Play against TBC. Wrecked Lin. And now wrecking WFC as well. Like He wasn't even close to losing a map this tournament. And that is so impressive. This is the most dominating player that I've seen in forever. Moonstreak holds on and it's just impressive how with 32 years of age... This guy always has the perfect solutions. Of course, the patch helps. He said it himself after WGL. But he is the one that really makes this work the best. By far, nobody's close. The fifth race is on the top of the Warcraft scene again. Thank you, Dare Van Pan, for the sub. This was uh, three days of getting up very early for me for you or staying up very late for you uh thank you very much for tuning in and all three days one uh, across 1000 viewers here at 7 30 a.m so i hope you enjoyed the belt and road esports competition i certainly did most of the time the chat was really really good especially yesterday at like four 
Um, that was a big support. That was the last offline event of the year, but not the last cast of the year. We have three more for you. That's going to be W League First Division on December 27, W League Super League on December 28, and the Shao Y Cup Finals on December 30. So mark that in your calendar. Check backtowarcraft.com for the schedule and also check calendar.backtowarcraft.com for more competition. If you want to support this channel and this project, uh, we're getting close to 1,500 streamed hours this year, which is pretty crazy. Averaging 30 hours live per week. Um, feel free to support uh, by subscribing to this channel. You get the replay packs, of course, in our Discord at discord.backtowarcraft.com. You can buy our merchandise shirts like this at shop.backtowarcraft.com or just tip us a little send us a donation via PayPal, cryptocurrencies, or credit card at donate.backtowarcraft.com. And you can still use our Amazon referral link even if uh, the Christmas present buy time is almost over. I thank you for the support throughout the past few days. I got a new piece of hardware here, my nice Elgato stream deck that helps me already to make this cast a little better and easier for you guys out there. I don't know if we get a coronation or something. I haven't seen this yet. I'm still on stream, but I guess not. So yeah, with Moon winning three tournaments in a row, I say goodbye. I wish you a very Merry Christmas or whatever holidays you are celebrating. I will drive home to my family in a few hours and meet my mother and my siblings and take three days off of Warcraft uh, to just get a little time. Oh. Uh, it's just a little handshake in front. Um, just, just take a few days off before we're back on December 27. Spend some time with your family, friends and loved ones. Um, spread positivity overwhelmed with kindness and yeah celebrate the good times oh thank you van pan for the five buck donation can you please shout out michael kazer or michael kazer for me the kotg boss okay doing that that is the last action here and here are the do nuts goodbye routine thank you very much for tuning in enjoy the holidays bye bye